Blessed are thou among women, blessed the fruit of our Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pray for our sinners now. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant it by the same Spirit, we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lady of Fatima. St. Joseph. St. Ignatius. St. Martin. St. Faustina. Saint Anthony Mary Claret, pray for us. all God's angels and saints, pray for us. in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good evening. Good evening so I'd like to explain the. Uh, what we're going to be doing tonight, which is going to be a little bit different, and it's going to be the following. I'll start by giving you a, a talk, a shorter talk, which will be our concluding talk for the consecration of Mary. Uh, then after that, right after the talk, within about five minutes after the talk, we will move on to our consecration ceremony. Our consecration ceremony, uh, given that the person leading the consecration ceremony is a pre priest, yours truly, it's done in the context of the Mass. So uh, it's going to be the Mass, which is going to be a little bit different, so I'll explain the differences. All of you uh, will have a scapular. The scapular that you have has already been blessed. So after the homily, myself and your pastor will be placing the scapulars on you. So you're going to have a scapular, you're going to bring the scapular up to me or Father C, and you're going to have the scapular opened as such. Okay? So make sure that you don't have the, the scapular uh, tangled up, otherwise, we're never going to finish the ceremony. Okay? One thing I'm very poor at is untangling scapulars, okay? Our Lady Undoer of Knots is better than me at that. So make sure you have the scapula open as such. Another thing is that usually, in my experience, people are way too far away from me, okay? And my arms are only about uh, 18 inches long, not 18 feet long, okay? So try to get as close as you like, almost stepping on my feet, okay? And I'll place the scapular on you and I'll say, receive this scapular as a sign of your consecration to Mary. Then you'll say, Amen. Amen? Amen. Okay. So that will be, that will be your um, exterior sign. I almost forgot one of the most important things is all of you have the consecration prayer. Okay, you have the consecration prayer before you. Okay, you'll be saying that after my homily, okay? So you say that prayer after the homily, and then after that, we'll be imposing the scapulars on you. Is that clear? Okay. Um, 
then the mass proceeds as normal. But after the mass, we're going to have a very beautiful ceremony in which we will expose the Blessed Sacrament, we'll place the monstrance on the altar with the two candelabra, and then we will incense the Blessed Sacrament. Then we're going to have a Eucharistic Marian procession. Uh, we're in the process of the um, Gerardo who sings in the choir will probably be here within the next five or ten minutes. He's bringing a statue of Our Lady of Fatima. He'll, get, he'll, be, he'll bring that statue. It's not a statue that's coming from Fatima, but from Hawaiian Gardens, okay? <laughs> so we're going to be having a procession with the candles, with the incense, with the statue of Our Lady Fatima, and we're going to have a Eucharistic Marian procession within the church. So what I'm going to be doing is I will be walking in this direction. I'll be walking around the church, okay, and I'll be blessing you with the Blessed Sacrament, okay? And before me will be the statue of Our Lady Fatima. So I'll go around the church once, then I'll go around another time, one and a half, and then I will place this Blessed Sacrament on the altar. And then um, I will end by giving you a solemn blessing with the Blessed Sacrament. And then that's it. Okay? All right, so the... The talk I'd like to give tonight is this. I would like to speak about how we can how we can live out our consecration to Mary. Because the consecration you make tonight it's not a ceremony that that ends tonight, but rather it's a ceremony that begins tonight. So by making this consecration, you are deciding right now to live a style of life. And it's a style of life that's very radical. Because starting tonight, every one of you who have been preparing yourself for these four weeks, you no longer belong to yourself, but you belong to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Amen? Amen. So you no longer belong to yourself, but starting tonight, you belong totally to the Blessed Virgin Mary. If you like, a couple of days ago we celebrate the feast day of John Paul II, which was October 22nd. The papal, the papal motto of John Paul II was totus tuus ego sum. Totus tuus Ego Sum, which is taken from St. Louis de Montfort. That was the papal motto emblem of John Paul II. So what, what was John Paul II doing? He was giving his whole life and pontificate to Mary. And what a beautiful pontificate it was, right? His whole pontificate was placed in the hands and the heart of Mary. So right now, right now, with this Mass and consecration, you belong totally to Mary. 
that should fill you with so much consolation. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to Mary. It is a radical change of life. You are not your own. You belong to Mary. And if you belong to Mary, of course you belong to Jesus. Because Mary brings you to Jesus and Jesus brings you to God the Father. So that being said, let's talk now about how you, how you can assume this, this new, it's a new lifestyle really. It's like being born again. So these are the ways in which you're going to be living out this consecration. As soon as you get up in the morning, every morning, when you get up, you'll be consecrating yourself to Mary. Now you can say that long consecration that you're going to be praying after the homily or you can be saying a shorter consecration. But the first thing you get up in the morning is you consecrate yourself to Mary. And that should be a habit. As soon as you hear the alarm clock, the first thing you're doing is you're, you're giving yourself to Mary. You hear me? First thing I do every morning, um, actually I do it in Spanish, because I, uh, the first thing I say every morning is, Oh, Señora mía, O oh, Madre mía, yo me ofrezco de todo ti, and pray with me, feel the alafecta, te consagro en city, mis ojos, mis oídos, mi lengua, mi corazón, en una palabra todo mi ser, ya que soy todo tuyo, O oh, Madre buena, guarda me, defiende me como cosa, pero es tuya, amén. It's, it's ironic is because I don't know it yet in English. <laughs> I learned that in Argentina. So, But you have the one in English, Mary, I give you my eyes, my heart, my mind. I give you everything. That's actually the prayer of consecration from Colby, Maximilian Colby. Okay, so you give yourself totally to Jesus through Mary. And then the second thing you do is all of you, all of you will be wearing your scapular. Okay, here's a scapular. This is a scapular that my mother made, okay? It's a strong scapular. It's not very artistic, but it's more pragmatic because myself, being an, being an athlete, I rip things, no? So this is really strong, it's durable. So you wear this, you wear this at all times, it's, except when you're taking your bath in the morning. You wear this always. This, this is your your exterior sign of consecration to Mary. And if you look at this symbolically, the scapular, the word scapular comes from Latin scapula. Scapula in Latin means shoulder. So you place it over your shoulders. But if you look at the scapular, right now the scapular is over my heart. It's over my heart it's also over my shoulder. So symbolically, it's as if the Blessed Mother were giving me an embrace. Because it's over, my, it's over my heart, but it's also over my back. I love symbolism, okay? I, I, I think 
symbolically. Okay? That's the way I'm wired, okay? So having the scapula over my heart and my shoulder, it's symbolic of the Blessed Mother has me close to her heart. Mary is embracing me. She has me close to her heart. She's protecting me. She's a great mother. Your mothers have had your children close to your hearts, right? So Mary is your mother. Mary wants, to cl Mary wants you to be close to her heart at all times. You're very intimate, you're very endearing. And then what, what you do uh, after you say your act of consecration, with your scapula, you kiss your scapula. The Catholic Church gives indulgences. Every time you kiss your scapula, you receive an indulgence from the Catholic Church. Every time. An indulgence is a, is a very special blessing. The church has infinite treasures that come from the open heart of Jesus, pierced with a lance on Good Friday, and that infinite source of treasure is given to those who want it. So by kissing the scapula, you receive an indulgence. And a kiss is a universal symbol of love. Did you ever kiss your husband or your wife? Not yet? <laughs> you did it on your wedding day and that was the last time, huh? Once heard a lady, she was saying to her husband, you never, tell, you never tell me that you love me. And he said, I told you 25 years ago, and if I change my mind, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> so when you kiss the scapular, you're saying, Mary, I love you. And of all the virtues, that's the most important virtue in the Catholic faith. The most important virtue for the Protestants is faith. The most important virtue for the Catholics is charity or supernatural love. A little bit of mystical theology, okay? So by giving the kiss, you're saying, Mary, I love you. Then, this is my private practice, and I give you permission to, permission to imitate it. Then you take the scapular and you bless your forehead. You bless your eyes. You bless your lips. You bless your tongue. I usually bless my tongue three times because I talk a lot. Then I bless my heart. So by doing that gesture, you're saying to Mary, Mary, I want my thoughts to be noble thoughts. I want my thoughts to be pleasing to God. St. Paul says, put on the mind of Christ. Then St. Paul says, you have the mind of Christ. Who formed the mind of Christ? How many mothers here? Did you know you formed the mind of your child in your womb? You were actually developing the cranium, the cerebral part, the organ, so Mary actually formed the mind of Christ when she was pregnant. 
the mind of Christ. Then you bless your eyes. That's very important because the eyes are the mirror of the soul. As Thomas Aquinas says, the eyes are the gateway by, by which we receive sense experience. The eyes can be used to contemplate the glory of God, but the eyes can be used to look at things that are indecent. So we want to give the we want to give our eyes. We want to give our eyes to Mary. We want to live out that beautiful beatitude, Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are, blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. We want to bless, you can even bless your nose. St. Paul says that we're called to be the fragrance of Christ. We're called to be the fragrance of Christ. The good odor of Christ. What does that mean? Fragrance of Christ means a virtuous and a holy life. Then you want to bless your lips and your tongue so that your words the words that come out of your mouth will be pleasing to God. And your words that come out of your mouth will sanctify other people. Your words will be a light for others. Your words will be words of consolation. Your words will be words of instruction. Your words will be sometimes words of correction of your parents, right? Your words will be efficacious, means by which you're transmitting the word of God. And then you bless your heart. Your heart. And then Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So this is, the, this is the starting point of living out your consecration. By consecrating yourself to Jesus through Mary, as soon as you get up in the morning. And then by kissing the scapular. So the scapular that you wear is an exterior sign of your consecration to Mary. How, how do you know that I am a religious priest belonging to the Oblates of the Virgin Mary? I have a black habit. What's the difference between an oblate and a Jesuit? Okay, the oblate has the, the sash on the left. Okay, the Jesuit has the sash on the right. And the pony has the sash on the back, okay? Couldn't resist that one. Okay. So you can tell that an oblate because I'm, I'm dressed in the black habit. I have my black sash on the left. A Jesuit would have it on the right. So you can tell that I'm, I'm an oblate priest with a religious habit I wear. I'm not a Franciscan. I'm not a Dominican. I'm not a Carmelite. How can you tell that someone belongs to Mary? This is the exterior sign that you belong to Mary. Therefore, simply taking it off 
nonchalantly, uh, you shouldn't do that. And many people I know, I've put on thousands of scapulars. Where are your scapula? Where I took it off and I, I forgot where, where it is. No, don't do that. Wear the scapula. Wear it proudly. And if the scapula rips, get another one. I purposely have this because I, this one is very strong. It's, it's uh, shoelace. No? Because the stringy ones I rip apart in about a month. No? Now this is gonna this is gonna last probably a good ten years, okay? It's strong. Inside the scapular there's the miraculous medal, okay? And there's the medal of Saint Benedict. So I've got the miraculous medal, the medal of Saint Benedict, the scapular, and I've got my rosary in my pocket. I have all the most famous Marian sacramentals underneath the sun, okay? I'm Mary's soldier. I'm ready. I'm ready for battle. Huh? And at times, sometimes I, it has happened sometimes, I've actually taken my scapula off and I, I, I give it to someone because someone said they really want a scapula. I say, well, I'll take it. Take it and I'll get another one from my mother. I'll give it. So I feel uncomfortable until I get another scapula to put on me. So this is an exterior sign that you belong to Mary. You're in Mary's school. You're in Mary's family. You're in Mary's heart. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, how else do we live out our Marian consecration? Okay, there are other moments during the day in which we should call to mind our belonging to Mary. But you want to beg for the grace. Years ago, the young people had a wristband that had WWJD. Remember that? WWJD. There should be another one, WWJMD. What would Jesus do? What would Mary do? So you want to try, try to live in such a way that you're living in the presence of Jesus and Mary. That wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you say, you're living in the presence of Jesus and Mary. St. Teresa of Avila, whose feast day we celebrated just about a week ago, right? St. Teresa of Avila says we commit sins because we forget about the presence of God. we become temporary atheists. But if we're always thinking about God's loving presence, then we avoid committing sin. So you want to be constantly aware of Jesus' presence with you, Mary's presence with you. And if you do that, you're going to be living a holy life. You're going to be avoiding committing sin. You're going to be walking with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. You're going to be on the highway to heaven. Okay, other Marian practices. I would strongly encourage all of you to form the habit of praying the Angelus. They pray the Angelus. Pray the Angelus at nine o'clock in the morning if you can. This used to be 
a custom in the Philippines, I don't know if it still is, we have a house in the Philippines, is that at 12 noon in the Philippines, everything would stop. The commercial centers, the stores, and they'd be praying the Angelus at 12 noon. So praying the angels at 9 o'clock, praying the angels at 12 noon. And pray the angels at 6 o'clock. So you're sanctifying the morning through Mary. You're sanctifying the afternoon through Mary. And you're sanctifying the evening through Mary. Okay. Okay, another way in which we can live out our Marian consecration. Okay, this one, I'd like to say in honor of the saint that we celebrate today. We're going to be celebrating a vote of Mass in honor of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But technically today we celebrate a great Marian saint. The name of the saint we celebrate today is Saint Anthony uh, Maria Claret, the founder of the Claritians. So given that we celebrate his feast day today, I think it would be improper if I didn't mention some of one or two stories in his life that illustrates his, the presence of Mary. The first story is this. He was walking along the seashore when he was a child, and a huge wave engulfed him. And the wave pulled him into the sea. And he couldn't even, he couldn't even swim. So right away he cried out to Mary. And all of a sudden, it was like an invisible hand took him and placed him on the shore. And that was the presence of Mary. So in your, in your dangers, in your tribulations, in your struggles, turn to Mary. In other words, you want to share, you want to share your whole life with Mary. When you have problems, go to Mary. Now the beautiful example of someone who went to Mary was Saint Juan Diego. Juan Diego, you've heard of him, right? Juan Diego was the recipient of the apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe. December 12th, Juan Diego was heading to the city of Mexico to fetch a priest to give his uncle the last rites. On his way there, the hill Tepeyac, he tried to avoid her, she cut him off. And she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to visit the priest because my uncle is dying. She said, do not be afraid. She said these words, no soy yo tu madre, am I not your mother? No te tengo en el cruzar de mis brazos. Do I not have you in the crossing of my arms? No estás siempre en mi sombra. Are you not always in my shadow? No estás en el hueco de mi regazo. Are you not in the opening of my apron? Symbolically, Mary was saying to Juan Diego, you are in my heart. You are in my shadow, which means you're always present to me. You are in il hueco de mi regazo, would be, you are in the opening of my apron, which means you are present in my womb. 
There's no more intimate relationship between two persons in this world than a baby in the womb of his mother. You people through your consecration, you are going to be living in the heart of Mary. You're going to be living in the presence of Mary. You're going to be living in the womb of Mary. Who else speaks about we entering into the womb of Mary? St. Louis de Montfort. St. Louis de Montfort says we're called to enter into the womb of Mary. Why? Because the womb of a mother is forming. Psalm 139. The womb of the mother is forming and knitting. Knitting the baby. So we want to be formed in the womb of Mary so that we are born and we are Jesus Christ. No longer I who live, but Jesus who lives in us, in the words of St. Paul. You hear me? Okay, I'd like to tell you another story of St. Uh, Anthony and Mary Claret. Because our consecration is such that we're giving our whole person, our whole being, to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Okay, St. Anthony Mary Claret. We talked about this yes, uh, last week when we were talking about Lady Fatima. St. Anthony Mary Claret, when he was about 20 years old, he got sick, pretty sick. And he was bedridden for a while. When he was recovering, one occasion, he was assaulted by very, very powerful temptations. And these temptations were against the virtue of chastity. So what did he do? He called on Mary. He invoked Mary. He pleaded for Mary's help. The temptation seemed to get worse and worse. But he kept calling, calling upon the Blessed Virgin Mary. The temptation didn't stop. But he didn't give up. He kept imploring Mary's help. After imploring Mary's help for a long time, he opened up his eyes and noticed there was a whole army of devils of devils that were at the at the uh, at the bed at the, at the end of his bed, the bedpost. And he noticed in that moment the Blessed Mother came and all the devils fled. In that moment, Anthony Mary Claret, like Saint Faustina, was given the gift of perfect chastity. Let's all pray for that tonight. Amen? Amen. Let's all pray for that tonight. Wouldn't that be a beautiful gift as the Blessed Mother tonight? What do you think? Hello? Amen. One of the most challenging virtues is the virtue of purity, right? We talked about that, right? It's where the devil has a real heyday today. So we want to consecrate our chastity to the Blessed Mother. We as priests and religious, young people, married people, single people, widows, widowers, we all had to live this very challenging but very beautiful virtue is the virtue of purity. And who can give us the virtue of purity better than Mary? She's the one that can obtain that virtue for all of us. 
So we want to give ourselves totally, unreservedly, to Jesus through Mary. We want to give our past, our present, our future, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our bodies, our memories, our understanding, our imagination, our soul, our children, our families, our parish. We want to give everything to Mary. Everything to Mary. If you give everything to Mary, you are in good hands. So starting tonight, you're going to be living in the heart of Mary. It's the best place to be. Amen? Amen. Closing story. We'll move into the Mass. Once a poor farmer that was walking down the road and he had a bag of seeds underneath his, his arm. And he heard some noise behind him and it turned out it was the king, his horses, and the chariot. And the king stopped and asked the farmer what he had. The farmer said that he had a bag of seed beneath his arm. He was going out to sow his seed in the field. And the king said, well, I would like you to give me some of that seed. So interiorly angry because the farmer was poor and the king had everything, he took and he gave one of the seeds to the king. The king, in turn, gave him a, a white box. So the king took off and left the farmer on the beaten path heading toward his little, his little shack. And all the while he was cussing out the king because the king was asking him, this poor farmer, for something, and the king basically had everything. Finally arrived at his little hut, opened up the door, and he put the box, the white box, on the table. He decided he'd open it up. So he opened up the box, and in the box there was a huge wad of cotton, and inside the cotton was a beautiful diamond. And the farmer said, why didn't I give him all the seed? If I were to give him all the seed, I would have thousands and thousands of diamonds. So now is the time in which we want to give Mary everything. Don't hold back anything. Give Mary everything. Your past, your present, your future, your joys, your sorrows, your triumphs, your failures, everything you have, you want to give to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And if you give everything to the heart of Mary, you will end up one day in the sacred heart of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen.